In the first part, we, before the break, we discussed um, Yahuwah said he's going to punish his go away until Israel bear punishment for their error. And he revealed in the book of Hosea that Israel will be struck for two days before Israel will be raised back up on the third day. So, continuing with this discussion, before the fourth regeneration will occur, let's see what else will have to happen. The book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8, the Apostle Peter reminded us of this. He said, However, do not let this escape your notice, beloved ones, that one day is with Yahuwah as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So Apostle Peter reminded us that we should not let this escape our mind, even though Yahuwah said he's going to punish Israel for two days. Keep in mind that one day with Yahuwah is as a, is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So this that means that this two days punishment for Israel, all Israel will bear punishment for their error for two days equals to two thousand years. That's what Peter said we should keep in mind. He reminded all Israel to keep this in mind that one day is a thousand years with Yahuwah. So if he said he's going to punish us for two days, that means for two thousand years Israel will be in punishment. In the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 13, there it is written, Then he said to Abraham, Know for certain that your offspring will be foreigners in a land not theirs, and that the people there will enslave them and afflict them for 400 years. So during this time of punishment on Israel, the 2,000 years punishment, Israel will also, the descendants of Abraham will also do what? Serve 400 years slavery in a land that is not theirs. So they will be taken away from the, their promised land given to them to go to a land that is not theirs. And there they will be enslaved and be afflicted for 400 years before they can return back for the fourth regeneration of the people of Israel in the promised land. So what is written in the book of Hosea, Come, let us return to Yahuwah, for he has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day he will raise us up, and we will live before him. So after two days or two thousand years of punishment for the people of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, God will gather back Israel, the chosen ones, for the fourth regeneration back to the promised land. Before that, he will struck Israel for all our error and then gather, back, gather together all Israel back to the promised land for the fourth regeneration after 2,000 years have passed. So, moving on, Before the fall regeneration will occur, we need to identify the chosen race, the people that God is dealing with. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 20 to 21, the Messiah, Yahushua, that was sent to Israel said this, 
Stay really then by their fruits you will recognize those men. Not everyone saying to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones doing the will of my Father who is in heaven will. So the Messiah said that not everyone on earth calling Lord, God, 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 Lord, Lord will return back to the kingdom of heaven for the full regeneration. Not everyone will return back for the full regeneration, but it is those who are doing the will of his Father in heaven. They are the ones that will return to inherit the promised land for the fourth regeneration. They are the ones that will return back to the kingdom of heaven. So the question is, who are the ones or race that is doing or serving the will of the Father in heaven? Who are the race, the race that is serving the will of their Father in heaven? Which race has been plundered and enslaved for 400 years? Again, by their fruits you will know these men. Yes, by their fruits you will know these men, those who have been serving this punishment. So the will of the Father is that all Israel will bear, is that all Israel will bear and serve punishment for their error for two days, equals to 2,000 years. So included in that 2,000 years punishment is that Abraham's descendants will also do what? Serve a period as foreigners in a land that is not theirs. And the people there will what? Enslave them and afflict them for 400 years. That is how you will identify the race or the chosen ones of Israel. The race that we are taken to a foreign land where they will serve 400 years. They are the ones doing or serving the will of their Father in heaven. <clears throat> so before the four regeneration, we need to identify the chosen race because by their fruits is what we will how we will identify them. So who are the ones? Or the rest doing or serving the will of the Father, in, their Father in heaven. So, which race we are captured and sent into slavery by sheep? For in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68, there is written, And Yahuwah will certainly bring you back into Egypt, that is, into slavery by sheep. By the way that I told you, you will never see it again, and there you will have to sell yourself to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. So, which race were captured and sent into slavery by ship? Remember, by their fruits, you will know this man. That is what the key that the Messiah gave to us. By their fruits, you will know this man. That is the key to identify the chosen race that God is dealing with. The chosen race that God sent into punishment until they finish their punishment for their error. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64, there is written, Yehovah will scatter you among all the nations, from the one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. And there you will have to do what? Serve gods of wood and stone, 
which you and your forefathers have not known. So the people, the chosen race, will be served, will be scattered among the nations, and there they will be serving the gods of woes and stone, gods that they have not known, their forefathers have not known, the gods of the other nations, which race today is serving the gods given to them by the other nations. Isaiah chapter 4, chapter 14, verse 3. There it is written, In the day when Jehovah gives you rest from your pain and from your tumor and from the hard slavery imposed on you. So, which race? Is serving the hard slavery imposed on them by God. You be the judge. But we need to identify the chosen race because in their fourth regeneration in the promised land is when all the families of the earth will be blessed. So without we identifying them, then how can all the families of the earth be blessed if we don't identify the chosen race? For in their fourth regeneration is when they will do what? Bring blessings to all the families of the earth. So before the fourth regeneration will occur, it is good that we know the start and the end of the punishment upon the chosen race. It's good that we know the start and the end of the punishment on the chosen race. In the book of Amos chapter 9 verse 1 to 4, it is written, I saw Yahuwah stationed above the altar, and he said, Strike the head of the pillar, and the threshold will shake. He said, Cut them off at the head, and I will kill the last one of them with a sword. So no one who flees will get away, and no one trying to escape will succeed. If they dig down into the, gra into the grave, from there my hand will take them. And if they go up to the heavens, from there I will bring them down. And if they hide themselves in the top of the camel, from there I will search them out and take them. If they conceal themselves from my eyes on the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent and it will bite them. If they go into captivity before their enemies, from there I will command the sword and it will take them. I will fix my eyes on them for bad and not for good. Yes, from here you can tell God gave us a timeline as to when the punishment upon the chosen rest will begin. He said, after they strike the head of the pillar, then the threshold will shake. So he will, when they cut off, they will be cut off of the, of the head, and he will kill everyone with the sword, every one of them with the sword. Again, like what is written by the prophet Daniel after the Messiah is cut off? The Messiah will do what? Return back. The heaven will hold the Messiah for a while, while Israel bear punishment for error. So the starting of this punishment is started with the death of the Messiah. So who are the ones? So who are the ones or the rest doing the, or serving the will of the Father in heaven? Yahushua the Messiah and the King of the Jews was put to death and he was cut off by the Romans in the year AD 33. Yes, he was put to death 
in the year AD 33 by the Romans. From then on, for two days or for 2,000 years, all the people of Israel started to be imposed. They started to impose hard punishment for their error. So since AD 33, the people of Israel has been in this hard punishment, has been serving this hard punishment imposed on them for their error. So we have seen the start we have seen the start of this punishment. Now the question is when will this punishment be over for the chosen race? For without this punishment being over for the chosen race, the blessing of all the families of the earth will not occur. So we need to find out when will the punishment be over for the chosen race those serving the hard slavery imposed on them. So Yahushua the Messiah and the King of the Jews were put to death and cut off by the Romans in the year AD 33. From then on, for two days, 2,000 years, all the people of Israel started to started the imposed punishment for their error. So, AD 33 plus 2,000 years, that will get you to the year 2033, will be the end of the punishment for the chosen offspring of Abraham. So again, keep in mind that Yehovah, the God of Israel, tells the future from the beginning. And he never hides anything from his servants, the prophets. So he has revealed of what he's doing. The punishment on the people of Israel will end in the year 2033. So before the fourth regeneration will occur, Yahuwah will judge and punish the nations of the earth. Yes, before the end of the judgment on the people of Israel, before the punishment ended in the year 2033, God will also judge and punish the nations of the earth for their own error. Uh, notice what is written in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 20, chapter 32, verse 31 to 35. It's written, for their rock is not like our rock. Even our enemies have understood this. For their vine is from the vine of Sodom and from the terraces of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of poison. Their cluster are bitter. Their wine is the venom of serpents. The cruel poison of cobra. Is it not stored up with me, sealed up in my storehouse? Vengeance is mine and retribution. At the appointed time when their foot sleeps, for the day of their disaster is near, and what awaits them will come quickly. Yes, Yahuwah also revealed that he, knew, that he knew about the other nations, the peoples of the other nations. He said that um, their vine, or what they produce, is the, like Sodom and of Gomorrah. And their grapes are grapes of poison. If you keep eating what they produce, you are like poisoning yourself. So their wine is the venom of serpents. 
the cruel poison of cobra. So the things that the nations are producing are nothing but death, things that will put people to death. God said he is aware of this. And it is stored up in his storehouse. He knows about it. So he said vengeance is his and he will give retribution to the nations. And he said their own judgment or their own disaster will come quickly. So the judgment that is coming upon the nation will not be like 2,000 years judgment. No. It's going to come quickly. So God will also judge the nations before bringing an end to the punishment, the people of the judgment of, on the people of Israel. He will also judge the nations quickly before he brings an end and returns the fourth um, and return the fourth regeneration of the people of Israel. So in the book of Jeremiah it is written in verse Jeremiah chapter twenty five verse twenty nine to thirty three not this one is written <coughs> for look I am bringing calamity first on the city that bears my name. Should you go unpunished? For I am calling a sword against all the inhabitants of the earth, declares Yahuwah of armies. And you are to prophesy to all these words to them and say to them, From on high Yahuwah will roar, and from his holy dwelling place dwelling he will make his voice heard he will roar loudly against the, his abiding place shouting like those treading the wine press he will sing triumphantly against all the inhabitants of the earth a noise will resound to the ends of the earth for Yahuwah has a controversy with the nations he will personally pass judgment on all flesh all humans and he will put the wicked to the sword, declares Yahuwah. This is what Yahuwah of Ami says. Look, a calamity is spreading from nation to nation, and a great tempest from the, will be unleashed from the remotest part of the earth. So Yahuwah told the nations through their Jeremiah that they will not go unpunished. They too will, like the Israelites, drink the cup of his wrath. They too will be judged at the appointed time. In fact, like unlike their judgment will be swift or will come quickly. Unlike the judgment on the people of Israel that will last for two thousand years, the judgment of the na on the nations will come quickly. Quickly they will be annihilated. It will not last for two days or, or, or two thousand years, like the, in the case of the Israelites. So it will be a quick judgment on the nations. So this has to take place before God will regenerate uh, the people of Israel back to the promised land. Yes, before God will recreate all things back to the restore all things back to Israel. He will first judge the people of the nations. So it was foretold uh, of what would take place during the time that Yahuwah was we judge the nations. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 33, there it is written, And those slain by Yahuwah in that day will be from one end of the earth clear to the other end of the earth. They will not be mourned 
and they will not be gathered up or, be, or buried. They will become like manure on the surface of the ground. Well, you shepherds, and cry out, Walla about, you majestic ones of the flock, because the time of your slaughter and your dispersion has come, and you will fall like a precious vessel. The, shepherd, the shepherds have no place to flee, and there will be no escape for the majestic ones of the flock. Listen, the outcry of the shepherds and the wailing of the majestic ones of the flock, for Yahuwah is devastating their pasture. Yes, when Yahuwah goes, brings his judgment on the nations, the leaders, the shepherds of the people will be crying. They will cry out. Uh, the rulers and those majestic ones of the, um, of the people of the earth, they will all cry out because the judgment of Yahuwah on the nations will be so bad. So may, many will be slain and put to death. They will, not even, they will not even be buried. So it's going to be a terrible judgment too, just like it was for the Israelites. In the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 9 to 12, it's written, Say, proclaim this among the nations, prepare for war, stir up the mighty, mighty men, let all the soldiers draw near, let them advance. Beat your plowshares into, into swords and your prowning shears into spears. Let the weak ones say, I am powerful. Come and help. And all you surrounding nations assemble together to the place, O Yahuwah, bring to the place. O Yahuwah, bring down your powerful ones. Let the nations be roused, be roused and come to the play, to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit in order to judge all the surrounding nations. Yes, Yahuwah will carry out his judgment that he has foretold long ago that is coming for the nations. And he is going to use his powerful ones to do it. And his powerful ones are his angels. He's going to bring his angels to carry out the judgment that he has foretold long ago. In the book of Isaiah, remember that one angel was able to kill 185,000 under 12 hours. Yes, 185,000 Assyrian soldiers fell, was put to death by one angel of God. So, Yahuwah will bring his powerful ones, his angels, to carry out the judgment that he has foretold long ago that is coming for the nations. And he will carry this out before he can restore the people of Israel for the fourth regeneration back to the promised land that he promised to give to them to inherit forever. So after the judgment, after the judgments of the people of Israel and the judgments of the nations, God will then, God will then gather back the remaining ones of the earth. So after the judgment of the people of Israel, and the judgment, judging of the nations of the earth, God will then gather back, gather together the remaining ones of the earth. In the book of Acts chapter 15, verse 16 to 18, Peter revealed this, After these things I will return and raise up again the tent of David that is fallen, that is fallen down, I will rebuild its ruins and restore it, so that the men who remain may earnestly seek Yahuwah together with the people of all the nations, 
People who are called by my name, says Yahuwah, who is doing all, doing these things, none from of old. So after the judgment of the nations, after the judgment of Israel and the judgment of the nations, God said he will return and rebuild the, de the tent of David or the house of David that has fallen down and he will rebuild his ruins and restore it as in the days of old so that the remaining people on earth will join the people of Israel to do what? to worship Yahuwah the God of Israel so he is the one doing all these things he has foretold all these things from long ago he has foretold all these things from long ago. In the book of Amos chapter 9 verse 10 to 12, it is written, They will die by the sword, all the sinners of my people, those who are saying the calamity will not come near us or reach us. In the day that I raise up the boat of David that is fallen, I will repair the breaches, and I will restore its ruins. I will rebuild it as in the days of long ago, so that they may take possession of what is remaining of Edom, and all the nations on whom my name has been called, declares Yahuwah, who is doing this. So God said, first he will pass judgment on all sinners of his people of Israel. And likewise, in the book of Jeremiah, God said he's going to pass judgment on all, hum all humans. And many will be put to death through the judgment that he will execute. After the judgment, then he will re restore the boat of the, the house of David that has fallen. And the house of Israel will take possession of the remaining ones of the earth. And the remaining ones on, of the earth will earnestly seek Yahuwah together with the people of Israel. So Yahuwah tells the future from the beginning. His judgment on Israel is still going on but soon, all, all the sinners of Israel will be put to death, together with the sinners of the nations. So let's look at the blessings to come for all the families of the earth. <clears throat> this blessing will come after the judgment after the judging of Israel and after the judging of the nations. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 13 and 14 is written, And I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to the one speaking, How long will it the vision of the constant future and the, of the transgression causing desolation continue? to make both the holy place and the army, army team to trample on. So he said to me, until 2300 evening and morning, and the holy place will certainly be restored to its right condition. So from the vision, it was revealed to Daniel that the holy place or the, the house of Israel will be trampled upon by the nations, especially the, uh, the kingdom of Greece and the kingdom of the Romans, remnant of the Romans, for 2,300 years. It will take 2,300 years before the holy place will be restored to its rightful condition. Yes, Yahuwah promised that he will do what? restore all things back as he was before. 
So in the book of Daniel chapter 4 verse 17, there it is written, This is by the decree of watchers, and the request is by the words of the holy ones, so that peoples living may know that the Most High is ruler in the kingdom of mankind, and that he gives it to whomever he wants, and he sets up over it even the lowliest of men. So, Yehovah the God of Israel is the Most High. He rules over even in the kingdom of mankind. He is the one that has foretold all these things from the very beginning, the things that must take place. And he sets upon the rulership of mankind, whomever he chooses. So, <clears throat> God is the one doing all these things known from of old. He is the one that promised to bring blessings to the families of the earth, but it will come at his own appointed time, after first judging the nation of Israel and after first judging the nations of the earth then he will restore all things back to Israel. Yes, he will restore all things back to the holy, holy place, as it was in the very beginning. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, there is written, Repent therefore and turn around so as to get your sins blotted out, so that seasons of refreshing may come from Yahuwah himself and Yahushua. Heaven must hold this one within itself until the time of restoration of all things of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets. So Israel, we have identified the people of Israel and we are all Israel are being called to do what? To repent and turn around. Return to your God so that your sins will be blotted out. Seek Yahuwah your God, leave the gods of the nations alone. And your sin, he will blot your sins out. Regarding the Messiah, the heaven will hold this one within itself until the appointed time for restoring all things as spoken by our God. So the blood it is during this fourth regeneration of Israel in the promised land that all the families of the earth will be blessed. So let's look at, continue to look at the blessings to follow for all the families of the earth. It's written in the book of Psalms chapter, chapter 2, it says, so you, so you kings, Show insight, accept correction, you judges of the earth. Serve Yehovah with fear and rejoice with trembling. Say, honor the Son, or God will become indignant, and you will perish from the way. For his anger flares up quickly. Happy are all those taking refuge in him. So in the book of Psalms, chapter 2, 2 verse 11 and 12, the kings of the earth, the rulers of the earth today are being asked to do what? To serve Yahuwah. Serve Yahuwah with fear and rejoicing and rejoice with trembling. So that you honor the Son or God will become indignant and they will all perish in the way. So, 
before these blessings will come to the families of the earth, those ruling today are being asked to do what? Serve Yahuwah, seek what is His will. He has foretold these things from long ago, the things that must be carried out before He can bring blessings to the families of the earth. Until the rulers and the kings of the nations recognize what God is doing, until they accept the one that God has chosen to rule over all things and submit to the rulership of this one. My fam the families of the earth cannot, will not be blessed, will not obtain a blessing. In the book of Genesis chapter, 20, chapter 12 verse 13, there it is written, I will bless those who bless you, and I will cause him who calls down evil on you. And all the families of the ground will certainly be blessed by means of you. So the peoples and the, and the, the rulers of the earth need to seek out who are the chosen ones of Israel, who are the true descendants of Abraham. What is God doing with them? They should recognize that God is with the people of Israel. They should search for them, encourage them to do what? To return to serving their God. They should return to seeking their God. They should repent of their errors. For without their repenting of their errors, and returning to worshiping their God, the families of the earth will not obtain blessings. They will not be blessed. And without the kings of the nations and rulers of the earth encouraging the people of Israel to return, to serve their God, the families of the earth will never obtain a blessing. So, you kings and judges of the earth, serve Yahuwah, do his will, and rejoice with trembling. Yes, the kings of the nation and rulers of the earth should be trembling. Oh, we have been punishing God's people. We have been dealing badly with the descendants of Abraham, the true descendants of Abraham. They should be seeking to make a man with the God of Israel. Encourage the people of Israel to return to calling upon the name of Yahuwah their God, the living God. And not the false God that they have given the people of the nation of Israel. So they should be in fear, seeking to Make the people of Israel to help the people of Israel to return to their God. Seek out the chosen ones of Israel and support them. For through them, God will bring blessing to all the families of the earth. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, it is written, In the final part of the days, the mountains of the house of Yahuwah will become firmly established above the top of the mountains, and it will be raised up above the hills, and to it all the nations will stream. And many peoples will go and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of, the, of Yahuwah, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will instruct us about his ways, and we will walk in his path. For law will go out of Zion, and the word of Yahuwah out of Jerusalem. He will render judgment among the nations 
and set matters straight respecting many peoples. They will beat their sword into plowshares and their spears into pruning shears. Nation will not lift up sword against a nation, nor will they learn war anymore. Yes, it's written that in the final part of the day, the mountain of the house of Yahuwah will become firmly established because Yahuwah will restore and rebuild Zion. He will restore and rebuild Jerusalem. He will restore his people back to the promised land that he gave to them to inherit. Yes, and all the people of the earth will come to this mountain and be instructed and be taught. He said, for law will go out from Zion. God will install, install his son to rule from Zion over the earth. And all the kings and rulers of the earth will submit to him. So you kings, you are being encouraged to do what? To show insight and do what is right. Serve your whole with fear or you perish in the way. Again, let's continue to examine the blessings. The blessing is for those who exercise faith in the promise and the source for its fulfillment. So the blessings of the fa all the families of the earth is for those who exercise faith in the promise and the source for its fulfillment. <clears throat> By faith, it's written, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, although not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as a foreigner in the land of the promise, as in a foreign land living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the very same promise. So Abraham, with faith, or by faith, followed the directions that God gave to him. Yes, today, those exercising faith in the promise are the ones that will do what? Obtain blessings for themselves of the families of the earth. First Peter chapter 2 verse 11 to 12 is written, Beloved, I urge you as foreigners and temporary residents to keep abstaining from fleshly desires which wage war against you Maintain your conduct fine among the nations, so that when they accuse you of being wrongdoers, they may be able to be eyewitnesses of your fine works, and as a result, glorify God in the day of his inspection. So, the chosen ones of Israel are asked to do what? Maintain fine conduct among the nations where we have gone. So that when they accuse us of being wrongdoers, they will be eyewitnesses of the fine work, of our fine works. And as a result, they will glorify our God in the day of his coming to execute the things that he has foretold long ago. <clears throat> so those chosen and called for the hope of obtaining the promise of God still live as strangers among the nations until they obtain the promised blessings. So we are strangers among the nations. We are still looking forward for the fourth regeneration of the descendants of Abraham back to the promised land. 
that our God promised to Abraham to inherit forever. So the blessing is for those who are satisfied on the promise and the source of his fulfillment. In the book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8 to 10, there it is written, This is what Yahuwah says, just as when a new wine is found in a cluster of grapes, and someone says, Do not destroy it, for there is something good in it. Say so, so I will do for the sake of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring out of Jacob an offspring, and out of Judah the one to inherit my, hold, my mountains. Say so my chosen ones will take possession of, the, of it, and my servants will reside there. Sharon will be, become a pasture for sheep, and the valley of Anchor, a valley of Anchor, a resting place for cattle. For my people who search for me. So, yes, God said He will do what? He will not destroy all Israel, but He will take out of Jacob and out of Judah those that will inherit His holy mountain for the fourth regeneration. So, these chosen ones will take possession of the promised land, the kingdom of our God. And they will reside there forever. Okay, and this is for his people who search for him. So those who exercise faith in the promise and in the, so the source for fulfilling it are the ones that will receive the promise. In the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 13 is written, For it is not, for it was not true law that Abraham or his offspring had the promise that he should be heir of a world, but it was true righteousness by faith. In the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 and 24 there is written, For all Israel have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and it is true if, uh, if it is as a free gift that they are being declared righteous by God, God's undeserved kindness, through the release by the ransom paid by Yahushua the Messiah. So it is not through the works of the laws that this promise will be obtained. Because already through the works of the law, all Israel have sinned and have fallen short. We cannot obtain the promise by just keeping the law. But the promise is to be obtained by faith in the one who has promised and the source for accomplishing or realizing the, the promise. So it is through God's undeserved kindness which he promised to give to the descendants of Abraham. That is how we will obtain this promise by faith through the release by ransom by the price paid by Yahushua. Our Messiah sacrificed his life for this forgiveness of the sins of Israel. So it's by exercising faith in that promise and the ransom sacrifice of the Messiah that is how Israel will be restored for the full regeneration. So therefore, the common blessing of the full regeneration of Abraham's chosen descendant in the promised land is for the offspring that have searched to inherit the promise with faith and not by works of law. So we should seek for the promise by faith and not by the works of the law. Concerning the promise 
the blessing that will come to the families of the people, the families of the, all the families of the earth, um, the peoples of the nations also have to do what? Exercise faith in the promise and the, the source that God has provided. Yes, the blessing will come through the regathering of Abraham's chosen descendants. In their fourth regeneration is when all the families of the earth will be blessed. So the people of the nations who recognize that God is with us, the chosen ones of the chosen race, those of the other nations who are willing or who choose to go with Israel and serve and worship Yahuwah with these ones which share in the blessings of Abraham in the fourth regeneration. Yes, these ones of the people of the nation who recognize the source of the promise and how the blessings will come, those who are willing to go with the people of Israel to worship Yahuwah, the God of Israel, these ones will share in the blessings of Abraham's fourth regeneration in the promised land. So those who will accept and submit to the one to rule over all things will obtain the mercy of our God. In the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 21 it is written, Everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah will be saved both of Israel and the people of other nations, those of them who willingly choose to worship and serve the God of Israel will be saved. In the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 to 10, there is written, After these things I saw and looked, a great crowd which no man was able to number out of all the nations and tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne of and before the Lamb, this dressed in white robes, and there and there were palm branches in their hands, and they keep shouting with a loud voice, saying, Salvation we owe to our God, who is who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Yes, the peoples of the other nations who recognize that God is with Israel, those who willingly choose to go with the people of Israel to serve the God of Israel, those who will leave their idols and false gods of the nations and choose to worship Jehovah with the people of Israel, these ones will also obtain salvation. They will at the end say, we owe our salvation because of your God and because of the Lamb, the sacrifice of, your, of the Lamb, the one to rule over Israel. So, yes, faith is needed on the people of Israel. Faith is required on the people of the nation. Uh, for if they go with, they should have faith that if they go with the people of Israel and leave their false gods alone, that they too will obtain blessings from the God of Abraham. So, <clears throat> in conclusion, The conclusion of how to read and understand the Bible from the Hebrew prophet's viewpoints. Uh, through this lesson, you have re-educated your mind with the truth that will set you free. In fact, you now have, you now know and have the skeleton or the framework of the Bible. Now it is your turn to feel the flesh as you read the Bible. Uh, free your mind from the chains of miseducation by your oppressors and enemies 
who are hiding the key, who are hiding the truth, the key to the kingdom. So with the things that you have learned so far, you have like a basic foundation. As you read, you can understand what God is doing and you can put it pull it together as if you are solving a puzzle. Now that you have the basic framework of what God of Israel is doing. In the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 9 to 10, there is written, they will not cause any harm or any ruin in, my, in all my holy mountain, because the earth will certainly be filled with the knowledge of Yahuwah as the waters covers the sea. In that day the root of Jesse will stand up as a signal to the peoples. To him the nations will turn for guidance, and his resting place will become glorious. Yes, he was foretold that God will restore his people for the fall regeneration and Yahushua, the root out of Jesse, will rule over, over them. And the knowledge of Yahuwah will be as water covers the sea. And now that you have the skeleton, the skeleton or the framework of what is written, as you go back to the Bible to read them and understand them, the knowledge of what Yahuwah is doing will become abundant for you and become very clear to you. The question is, will you be among the few that will survive? Will you be among the few that will return to seek the God of Israel for your salvation? Will you be among the ones chosen to gain insight and be taught by, the, by Yahuwah the God of Israel of what he is accomplishing in Zion? So I hope this long lesson has been of interest to you and enlightening to you. Uh, I know it's, be, it's really a long lesson, but with time, go over them again on your own. You will be blessed. So, I hope like this person, you will say, I got it now. In conclusion, in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, is written, Happy is the man who does not walk according to the advice of the wicked, and does not stand on the part of sinners, and does not sit in the seat of those without faith. But his delight is in the law of Yahuwah, the Bible, and he reads his law meditatively day and night. So happy are you when you choose to do what? To read God's word in order to understand it meditatively day and night. You will be blessed and you will share in the blessing of Abraham. Again, thank you for the privilege to come to you. Uh, share, like this lesson, share it with your friends, share it with your family. For by the fourth regeneration of the people of Israel in the promised land that is coming, all the families, the remaining ones of the earth, will obtain blessings for themselves. Again, thank you.